to projects. In this video, we are going to explain about the project, which is a novel two-stage deep learning model for network intrusion detection, which is LSTM AE. Introduction of the project. The project highlights the increasing reliance on information and communication technology system, which is ICT systems and networks, which manage sensitive user data and they are vulnerable to attacks. These attacks, whether manual or automatic, they continuously evolve, leading to undetected data breaches. As computer networks become more pervasive, the need for robust network security becomes imperative. The project discusses the limitations of traditional security technologies such as firewalls, anti-spam methods, and antivirus software, which struggle to identify new or complex threats. Recognizing the need for enhanced defense mechanism, network intrusion detection systems are introduced as a secondary line of defense to monitor network traffic and identify intrusive events. Intrusion detection is emphasized as a critical aspect of network security with the goal of recognizing anomalous access to protected internal networks. The project discusses the gathering of intrusion data by network equipment and the role of network intrusion detection systems in conjunction with the firewalls to safeguard web servers. Traditional intrusion detection methods such as encryption, decryption, firewalls, and antivirus software are noted for their success in identifying limited attacks, but facing challenges in detecting a large number of attacks, including sophisticated ones like denial of service attacks. The introduction highlights the shift towards incorporating machine learning techniques, specifically support vector machine, k-nearest neighbor, naive base, and random forest to improve identification rates and reduce overhead. Highlighting recent advances in intrusion detection through deep learning, the project introduces a two-stage deep learning-based intrusion detection system, leveraging models like DNN, CNN, RNN, and LSTM. The IDS combines LSTM with the autoencoder to enhance detection accuracy. The primary objective is to present a robust IDS adept at efficiently processing intricate raw network data, ensuring effective and precise detection performance. Objective of the project. The objective is to design and implement a cutting-edge IDS incorporating deep learning models like LSTM and autoencoders. The system aims to significantly enhance the capability to detect and respond to network intrusions effectively. The goal is to overcome the deficiencies of conventional security technologies such as firewalls and antivirus software. By integrating machine learning techniques, the project aims to identify and mitigate both the known and novel threats, including those utilizing complex patterns like encoding and obfuscation. The project's objective is to create a robust system that is capable of efficiently processing large volumes of raw network data. The proposed two-stage detection system is designed to strike a balance between dimension reduction and feature retention particularly in high-balanced, imbalanced datasets, ensuring effective detection performance. The aim is to evaluate the performance of proposed LSTM AE model against existing intrusion detection models, specifically on the CIC IDS 2017 and CIC IDS 2018 datasets. This benchmarking exercise aims to highlight the model's superiority and distinctive capabilities in handling intricacies presented by these real-world datasets, ultimately contributing to advancements in intrusion detection systems for practical cybersecurity applications. The objective is to automate the detection of abnormal occurrences and the implementation of countermeasures to mitigate the impact of hostile agents. The project aims to contribute to the automation of network security operations, simplifying the management of security incidents and ensuring a swift response to potential threats. To implement this project, we need software and hardware requirements. Coming to software requirements, we need application of Anaconda, primary language of Python, front-end framework of Flask, back-end framework of Jupyter Notebook, database of SQLite 3, front-end technologies of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. To implement this project, we have designed various steps in the flow of work. The first step is importing the packages. This step involves importing necessary Python packages and libraries that are required for the project. We imported pandas for data manipulation, numpy for numerical operations, matplotlib and seaborn for data visualization, scikit-learn for machine learning, keras for deep learning, and flask for web development. Exploring the dataset. The project uses 
CICIDS 2017 and 18 data set. Data set exploration involves loading and inspecting the data to understand its structures, features, and potential challenges. Data processing. Here we have sub steps. Converting data into Pandas data frame. The data set is loaded into Pandas data frame. This provides a tabular structure that allows for easy manipulation and analysis of the data. Keras data frame. For compatibility with the Keras based models, a Keras data frame is created. Keras data frames are similar to Pandas data frames, but are optimized for use with the Keras deep learning models. Dropping unwanted columns. Certain columns that are deemed irrelevant or redundant for the analysis or model training that will be dropped. This streamlines the data set and reduces unnecessary computational overhead. The next step is visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Seaborn and Matplotlib are utilized for data visualization. This step involves creating various plots and charts to gain insights into data sets characteristics, distributions, and relationship between variables. Label encoding using label encoder. Categorical variables are converted into numerical format using label encoding. This is crucial for machine learning models that require numerical input. Feature selection. Feature selection is performed to choose the most relevant features for the model. Select percentile is a method that selects the top X percent of features based on statistical tests. Splitting the data into train and test. The data set is split into two sets, one for training the model and other for testing its performance. This step is vital for evaluating how will the model generalizes to new unseen data. Now we will know what are the algorithms used in the project. Convolutional Neural Network. It is a type of deep learning algorithm designed for processing structured grid data such as images. It consists of convolutional layers that apply convolutional operations to capture spatial hierarchies in the input data, pooling layers for downsampling, and fully connected layers for high level reasoning. CNNs are particularly effective for tasks involving spatial relationships and hierarchical features. In the context of network intrusion detection, CNNs can learn patterns and dependencies within network traffic data. The next algorithm is Deep Neural Network, which is DNN. DNN is a generic term for a neural network with multiple layers, including an input layer or one or more hidden layers and an output layer. Deep learning models in general refer to neural networks with a significant number of layers, allowing them to learn intricate representations of the data. DNNs are capable of learning complex patterns and representations from the data. In intrusion detection, this allows the model to capture intricate relationships between features, between various network features and potential threads. DNNs facilitate end-to-end -end learning, enabling the model automatically discover and represent relevant features without extensive manual feature engineering. The next algorithm is long short term memory with autoencoders. Long short term memory is a type of recurrent neural network architecture designed to capture long term dependencies in sequential data. LSTMs are equipped with the memory cells and gating mechanisms that enable to retain and selectively update information over extended sequences. Coming to autoencoders, they are a type of neural network architecture used for unsupervised learning. They consist of an encoder and a decoder, and the network is trained to reconstruct its input data. Autoencoders are often used for dimensionality reduction and feature engineering. Network traffic data often has a sequential nature where the order of the event matters. LSTMs are well suited for capturing temporal dependencies, making them effective for intrusion detection in network sequences. Autoencoders can be employed for dimensionality reduction, helping to identify the most relevant features while discarding the noise. This can enhance the efficiency of the model, especially when dealing with the high dimensional data. As an extension, we apply a method that combines the prediction of multiple individual models to produce a more robust and accurate final prediction. Also, as an extension, we build front end using Flask framework with the user testing and the user authentication. We used accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score to evaluate this project. And these are performance metrics. So here we have comparison graph for all those metrics for the data set, which is CIC IDS 2017. This is accuracy comparison graph. Here on x-axis, we have accuracy score for each algorithm. And on y-axis, we have algorithm names. Accuracy is a measure of the overall correctness of the model. It calculates the ratio of correctly predicted instances to the total number of instances. This is precision score comparison graph. It is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to the total predicted positives. It evaluates the accuracy of positive predictions.
This is recall comparison graph. Recall measures the ability of the model to capture all relevant instances. It is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to the total actual positives. This is F1 score comparison graph. It is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. It provides a balance between precision and recall, especially when there is an imbalance in the class distribution. Here we have comparison graphs for CIC IDS 2018. To execute the project, first we need to open the code folder which contains source code files. This is the code folder of the project. This is the dataset folder in which we have the datasets which are CIC IDS 2017 and 18. We use those datasets for training the algorithm. Here we have static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and bootstrap files. Here we have templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. Here we have two IPYNB files. These files, which are the Jupyter Notebook files, contain a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. They allow users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for the data science. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content that to be rendered in the HTML templates. This is the model file which contains the algorithm information and that will be loaded into the project code during runtime. This is the signup file. This file is the database file used to store the user information. Now we need to copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. So I'm copying the path. Now we need to open the Anaconda prompt. Using the CD command followed by the space, we need to paste the copied path and then click on enter. By this, current directory will change to the code folder's path. Here we need to type the command python space app.py and then click on enter. This will compile app.py file and it will execute a python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address which is the local host and the port unless configured differently. So here we have local host and this is the port. Now we need to copy this local link provided by the framework and paste it in any web browser. So I'm copying the link. I prefer Google Chrome, so I'll paste it in that. Here we need to paste the link and then click on enter. This is the web page of the project, which is displayed in the browser and this is built by using the Flask framework. Here we can see a register link first, we need to click on that and enter all the sign up details if you are signing up newly. I have already signed up and I have an account in it, so we'll directly click on sign in. Here we need to provide our credentials which are the username and the password. So I'm giving my username and the password and now we need to click on login. We have logged in successfully and we are redirected to prediction page. Here we can see the parameters which are need to be entered. Based on the given parameters, we will get the detection. So prior to entering the parameters, we will understand them. So the first parameter is forward packet length standard deviation. It represents the standard deviation of the lengths of forward packets in a network flow. It provides a measure of the variability or spread of the packet lengths in forward direction. The next one is forward packet length mean. It denotes the average length of forward packets in a network flow. It gives an indication of the typical size of packets moving in the forward direction. The next one is forward packet length maximum. It represents the maximum length observed among the forward packets in a network flow. It indicates the largest packet size in the forwarded direction. The next one is forward segment size average. It refers to the average segment size for forward packets in a flow. It provides insights into the typical size of segments in forward direction. The next one is packet length standard deviation. Packet length standard deviation measures the variability in lengths of all packets within a network flow. It reflects the degree of dispersion or spread in packet sizes. The next one is flow IAT standard deviation, which is flow inter-arrival time standard deviation. It represents the standard deviation of inter-arrival times between consecutive packets in a flow. It categorizes the variability in time intervals between packets. The next one is backward packet length standard deviation. 
similar to forward packet lens standard deviation. This parameter denotes the standard deviation of lens of packets moving in the backward direction within a network flow. The next one is backward segment size average. Backward segment size average represents the average segment size for backward packets in a network flow. It gives an indication of the typical size of segments in backward direction. The next one is packet size average. Packet size average denotes the average size of packets within a network flow. It provides a measure of the central tendency of packet sizes in both forward and backward directions. The next one is subflow forward bytes. This parameter represents the total number of bytes transmitted in the forward direction within a subflow of a network connection. Subflow are the components within a communication and this metric quantifies the byte count in the forward subflow. Now we understood all the parameters, so we will enter them. Here, forward packet length is 234.85. The next one, mean is 154.85. Maximum is 712. Segment size average is 154.85. Packet length standard deviation is 322. The next one which is flow IIT standard deviation is 3894924. And the backward packet length standard deviation is 395.92. And the backward segment size average is 249.416. Packet size average is 198.5. Subflow forward bytes are 2168. Now we will click on predict. Here we got the prediction as there is no attack detected and it is normal. Now we will enter the parameters again but with the different units. So click on home. I entered all the parameters. Now we will click on predict. Here we got the prediction as there is an attack detected and the attack type is DDoS which is golden eye. Now we will enter the parameters again but with different values and get the prediction. Click on home. I entered all the parameters. Now we will click on predict. Here we got the prediction as there is an attack detected and the attack type is DDoS which is slow loris. In this way, if we enter all the required parameters to the system, based on the parameters, we will get the prediction whether attack is detected or not. If the attack is detected, it will detect which type of attack it is. Now click on logout. Conclusion of the project. The project tackles the escalating challenges in the network security where the susceptibility to both manual and automatic attacks poses a significant threat to ICT systems managing sensitive user data. In the context of increasing reliance on computer networks, the project underscores the paramount importance of robust intrusion detection mechanisms. Network security is crucial to safeguard against unauthorized access, policy breaches, and the evolving capabilities of attackers. By integrating advanced machine learning and deep learning techniques like LSTM, AE, CNN, and DNN, the project effectively addresses the limitations of conventional security technologies. It successfully identifies new and complex sets that traditional methods struggle to detect. The project's model not only excels in identifying complex attacks but also contributes to the mitigation of potential threats. The utilization of cutting-edge techniques employs the system's adaptability allowing it to learn and respond to intricate patterns in network traffic data. With the incorporation of Flask, SQLite, and user-friendly frontend, the project enhances user interaction while ensuring a secure environment. This contributes to an overall positive user experience, fostering efficient input of feature values and receiving predictions in a secure manner. The project as a whole signifies a significant step forward in advancing network security measures. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.